Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Entropia Content. Now, today, it's a bit of a somber episode. I was having such a good day yesterday. Everything was going great. Then I ended up getting some bad news right at the end of the day. Kind of like ruined my whole day. Well, I actually just got it this morning, so I'll try not to let it ruin my whole day, but... I don't know, I've been working for a long time, years and years, with the Disclosed TV website. And I don't know if they sold it, got new owners, or what it was, but there were some like, major changes to the site. And they like really ruined the site. Like It used to be set up just like YouTube with thumbnails, really cool grids, you could sort it by categories. And you could have view counts, so you could see how your views are doing. But then the new owner, or maybe same owner, just changed it. That uh, Everything got taken down. It switched to like a form version. So instead of cool thumbnails and all this, it switched to just plain text. And it also removed the, the view count so you can never see how many views you were getting. So I was a little bit disappointed with that and just quit using it. I was like, all right, I'm going to use YouTube and other stuff. But then they sent me an email and they're like, hey, welcome back. We just opened the, the, the show or Disclosed TV page again. We want more creators to come back and create content. Sent me an invitation. So I'm like, okay, great. I'm going to come back and start creating content for you. I was like, all my old content got deleted. So I'll start creating some new stuff. They said they couldn't merge the server from the old one. So they have to start all new. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to call this show the Disclosed TV News because it's on Disclosed TV and it's the news. And then I went to Disclosed TV to check their copyright on their, their logo to see if I could add it. It says right on the Wikipedia page that it's public domain. There's no copyright on it. Go ahead, use it. So what do I do? I use it, make the Disclosed TV News. Great episode. Everyone loved it except for one guy. One guy sent me this really cool email telling me off. I was like, all right. It's like normally when you piss people off that bad, that's when you know your show is good. Because right? <laughs> if they, they didn't, well, I guess if it wasn't good enough, they would have just turned it off instead of hating it so much. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. All right. So I got here the, the hate mail. Sorry he deleted it. But what YouTube does is they let you keep a record of the beginning of the hate mail. And then they just cut off the rest or they it del got deleted. So I'll bring it up on the screen so everyone can check out this guy's channel and see what he's all about. I don't know, just a warning, if anyone else is going to be telling me off and stuff, I'm likely going to use your content for the show. Not to like try to piss you off or anything, but it gives me something to talk about. <laughs> Alright, so we got a message from Dirk Koons. And I'm assuming he's a German guy because when I searched his name in YouTube to see what his channel was all about, I only found two people with that channel name. And none of them seem to have like paranormal content. So maybe he deleted his whole channel or maybe it's unlisted channel. So I don't know. But yeah, if you guys, well, I think I actually posted a comment on the one guy's channel to see if it was him. Just asking nicely. <laughs> so anyways, Dirk Koons commented that, bro, you're the definition of a moron. <laughs> you should be embarrassed about yourself. Your IQ is so low, you can't even articulate yourself in an entertaining and lucid manner. You're a joke. Don't even. <laughs> well, maybe even. I don't know. It says don't eve. So, a big shout out to Dirk Koontz. I don't hold it against him for having a, a negative opinion about my show. And actually, I really appreciate him posting a comment, even though it got deleted. But, no, even if you got negative comments about the shows that I make, I encourage everyone to at least put a comment so I have an idea about what's negative about it, stuff I can improve if possible. It's kind of annoying when I get a dislike and people don't say why, because I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's like, it's negative criticism that could be constructive, but I don't know what I should be trying to improve. <laughs> Alright, so I did get some other lovely, nice mail. I should maybe add a bit of that. I should be totally negative. <laughs> yeah, look at the screenshot I paused on. <laughs> Anyways, this nice guy, Pierre Paolo Balani. Sorry, I can't say names well. Not even my own name. That guy's right. I can't properly articulate, so he's not all wrong about his criticisms. Maybe he's all right. <laughs> Some days I should be embarrassed about myself, but I don't know why I'm not. 
Alright, so uh, this guy was cool. He put some nice comments. He's like, nice, I've always been interested in things like this. I'll watch your other YouTubers that have content like this. It says, the first debunking I've watched on your channel is good job. So now to be fair, I did an episode debunking Einstein, but for the whole thing, I put through that it is just a theory, and it's obviously not, more than likely not true. But I'm just like exploring theories. I don't know if people have problems with that, I guess, but... <laughs> Yeah, something to ask uh, Pierre if he has any paranormal topics he wants me to do a no new show about, like a new episode. But sadly that whole show has gotten cancelled. It was weird, it's like Disclose TV sent me a, or they sent, they commented on my video. And they put that I was not part of their team. And they never asked me to create videos and that I shouldn't use their logo, even though it's not trademarked. And it was listed as public domain. <laughs> So I was like, okay, this is a lot of conflicting information I'm getting here. So in the comments, I responded to them and said, this is the email I received from Disclose TV asking them to create content on their site. Did you guys send this to me or not? And then I clarified as well. I checked the trademark on your logo and it says right on it, public domain. So I don't know what you're talking about, that you're saying that I can't use your logo because it's trademarked. It's not. And also that, so yeah, and the whole thing too, I just told him like, look, like if you don't want me sharing your show or your site name, then I'll change the name of the show, I guess. I'll call it Bitch Shoot News. Maybe they want promotion to their site. So I don't know, it, it kind of gets me a little suspicious because something fucked happened to Disclose TV where it was like one of the best websites on the internet for paranormal content. Then Gaia TV came out and started to rival them. And then it was like Disclosed TV, yeah, it was Disclosed TV was better than Gaia. Then something happened to Disclosed TV where it got all fucked. They started making changes and not for the better. Maybe in retrospect, some people think removing the views and removing the thumbnails made it better. But yeah, and then all of a sudden Gaia TV takes off. I don't know, maybe like Gaia TV asked me to do shows for them in the past. And I was like... Uh, if you guys are like charging for the content, usually that's something I don't do because like I like to share all my information for free. I'm not trying to make money off this. Well, other than the, <laughs> the Bitcoin casino, but I'm pretty sure everyone could verify that I'm not really making money on that. It doesn't even cover my electricity bills. <laughs> but yeah, so I was like, holy shit, like I don't know what's going on with Disclosed TV. If it's some investor bought it and tried shutting it down so the guy could be more successful. I don't want to say that's like a legit like accusation, it just makes me wonder. So I don't know, I guess probably that'll be the end of my paranormal content. I was really looking forward to Disclosed TV coming back one day and being great again, but... Sadly that dream died today. <laughs> well, I was thinking the one good thing about it is I finished that very quickly. <laughs> so I was like, yes, finishing quickly is my specialty. <laughs> one episode, show cancelled. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a cool guy. He's been posting that he buys sweat for 1.5k. So I'm just going to message him and ask him what's the details on that. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird because I was like, man, my Disclosed TV video is getting tons of views, tons of comments. Everyone loves it except for one guy. And then <laughs> maybe that one guy was like one of the admins at Disclosed TV. Alright, so he responded right away, that was cool. So I asked him, the sweat buying sounds cool, how does it work? Well yeah, and if anyone wants some updates, I did do this, the Sober October analysis my second day. It should be third day, but I forgot that October 1st was that day, so I fucked it up a little bit. But I figure I'll do one extra day in November. 
Yeah, so far so good. And the stomach issues haven't been so bad. I actually got hungry at one point yesterday, but it wasn't until like two or three in the morning. And then I'm like, I'm not eating at that time. So I just fucking went to bed and I managed to sleep okay. I did have a little bit of insomnia at the beginning, but I'd say about an hour into the sleep or laying down, I managed to fall asleep. Okay, so this guy is saying in order for this sweat program to work, I'll give you guys the details. He says, thanks. Watch my stream. Disable ad block. I never use ad blocks. So I don't have to disable that. Gather points for watching and sell your sweat to me. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to try this out. I always got sweat to sell. 1.5 is a good price. I don't know, guys. What do you think I should do about the whole disclosed TV thing? Should I keep fighting them and be like, we're talking, discussing with them, trying to say, hey, like, what's the deal? You invite me to create content. Your logo's not trademarked. Do you want me just to take the logo out so that I'm not sharing your name? <laughs> it's like normally social media platforms are like, hey, share our name as much as you can so word gets out, right? So I don't know, like something really seems fishy to me about that. I was thinking maybe it's just an ego thing. And like I notice sometimes people get really upset about sharing stuff that they create. And I always thought that was kind of weird because I'm like, man, if you're creating stuff and sharing it with everyone why don't you want other people to share your stuff it's like i'm not making money off of it i'm not like selling your name or selling any products under your name just promoting you so it's like i don't understand what's going on i don't know but yeah and then someone was saying too that oh it might be too controversial content you're creating and they might not want that on their servers i'm like well you're hosting a paranormal video site. Obviously, there's going to be some controversial stuff. That's what paranormal is. So like if you don't want that posted on your site, well, then what are we allowed to post? Like cat pictures or something? <laughs> All right, so I got to his Twitch page. And there's just a bunch of ads playing right now, and I muted it. Hopefully it is muted. Ah, cool. This guy's sweating on... Here, let me show you guys. This is pretty wild. So I encourage everyone to check out this guy's stream. I hope he's not going to get upset about me sharing it. It's like... <laughs> well, no, I'm on a roll for that lately, it seems. <laughs> so yeah, it says if you... Oh, I already did follow him. Oh, that reminds me. I've seen his ad before. Ah, it seems like maybe he's a Swedish guy. I don't really understand the, the language here. Maybe German. Yeah, donkey. I think that means thank you. Bitter splecken sie langsam. Right. Uh, I don't know. Where do we collect points? I guess I'll have to move that and figure it out. Like, how many subs does this guy have? I'm not really familiar with how Twitch works. I used to use it when it first came out, but I phased out using it because they kept deleting my videos. It's like, guys, if you're just going to delete my videos, I'll create it on a different platform. Now, I think what they had is you could post it from, what is it, Twitch and to YouTube at the same time. So if you want to archive, people had to switch to YouTube. So I was like, well, if I'm switching to YouTube for the archive, why don't I just switch to YouTube for everything? It's not, nothing really that Twitch offers. I don't know, when I tried doing streams, sure, I had some people watching, but I don't know, people watching and subscribers on YouTube is definitely a lot different, right? I don't know, does he have a chat here? I don't even see the chat. It appears his live image isn't running or moving, so... Right, so I'll just move that off the screen for now. I'll try to figure it out again later. If anyone has some information about how stuff works, uh, I'll... I'll maybe give an episode with updates. I'm 
No, not to, oh wait, never mind. I was gonna rip on this guy for selling the Creative Juice print because it's in the trade terminal. I forgot, that's not the one in it. Never mind, sorry guy. You're selling a good print. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell them I do a YouTube podcast for... Alright, so I asked him if he wants to be a guest. Oh yeah, and I forgot that there was one other YouTuber that I arranged to do a show with. Fuck, I always forget his name. Lord Spade, I think it is. But yeah, I'm gonna try to get him on the show right away. I was thinking I had no one to come on. I'm like, wait a minute, someone already did say yes. And I forgot to get back to him. So I'm trying to improve my memory and hopefully the disclose, or not disclose, the fucking Sober October is gonna help a little. Keeping my fingers crossed. Now I have tried quitting weed to improve my memory before, I haven't had the best luck with it. Did like minor improvements but almost nothing noticeable. Alright so I asked him about that and then yeah and we're doing some sweat, yeah let's go collect some items here. Yeah? Now, to be honest, at first this morning, I was a little bit stressed out over that whole Disclosed TV thing, but now when I think about it, it probably was better to ditch Disclosed TV and just go with BitChute or something. I don't think BitChute will get upset about me sharing their logo and saying, hey, come to boot BitChute, watch their channels and videos. I'm kind of surprised that Disclosed TV didn't want me sharing their name. It's like, you don't want people finding out about your site? Like, that's weird. <laughs> Now I think what they're talking about the association with like controversial content is where YouTube is lucky because they have some sort of policy where they can't get sued for anything on their channel. So maybe Disclosed TV doesn't have that so they're really running a high risk of getting flagged and sued. But then I don't understand how BitChute's working because BitChute would be in the same boat unless they got some sort of immunity too. Yeah, so I shouldn't get so down in the dumps. Hit or miss, win some, lose some. To be honest, the paranormal field is kind of weird and a lot of people give you strange looks when you're into it. So getting out of that field was kind of nice for a while. Maybe I should stick out of it for, for good. All right, oh yeah, that reminds me. Today I was supposed to start the scale journey. I figured now that I'm not overeating and I'm starting to go in the right direction, I have the courage to boot up the scale, the new one that I ordered, and get back on track. Now I'm still hoping to do the Entropia series where I show what my workout routine is like while I play Entropia to give people some ideas on how they can stay fit while playing Entropia. Not saying I have the ultimate method or anything, just some cool ways I found. I guess Cool's a retrospective idea. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so has anyone even heard of Disclosed TV before? It's like, maybe I'm trying to get myself into a, some sort of media platform that no one even cares about anyways. I really should just be switching to BitChute. I don't know if I should do that. I'll make a bit shoot news episode. Post it, get tons of views, tons of likes. <laughs> and then after I do that, I'll like copy the link and then share it on Disclosed TV and be like, hey, if anyone liked my Disclosed TV news show that got canceled, come over to BitChute. And <laughs> see what they think. I bet you they'll freaking delete the post. I don't want to do that. That's kind of mean, but God, it'd be tempting. <laughs> 
Try not to be so spiteful. Come on, be forgiving. <laughs> Spite! <laughs> now, I couldn't believe yesterday, like, how many of my friends and family are cheering for Trump to die. I was like, really? It's like, this guy has done so much for a country. He has a few controversial things, like enforcing laws that are already pre-existing. And now you want him dead? I was like, holy fuck, man, like, there's some really fucking mean people in this world. Like, I don't know, it seems like all the people that hate Trump seem to have, like, this fucking really dark side where they, like, w wish people harm and want them dead. And I was like, dear God, it's like, like, what kind of person does that? Like, wishes other people harm. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's like, I, I just guess I've always, like, made like amends with any people that I've usually had bad issues with so it's like I kind of learned that it's like hey it's like forgiveness and everything that's the way to go in life You're starting to hold grudges against people and shit it's just gonna drag you down so I don't know I guess a lot of people haven't realized that and they they like to hold grudges against people and like to get dragged down into the gutter so I teach the wrong I know I've been caught up in those phases in my life too where you get into that victimhood mentality where everyone's out to get you and you realize that hey everyone's not out to get you it's just you gotta try harder and prove yourself and stop blaming other people for your own faults now and if anyone's wondering action wise I think I don't think I'll be able to stay on Rocktropia too long like, God, I'm really dying to go back to Nexile and get all my ped back from that crafting mission. Like, I started to think, what happens if this Skyripper thing is going to take, like, a year or two to finish? So, what am I going to do? Leave all my ped balance on Next Island and wait till they fucking finish? That's probably not a good plan. <laughs> so, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll swing back to Next Island, finish up the crafting run, see if I can get some more of those Kraka blueprints. Um, I think I have one for sale in my shop still. No one's done any shopping at my shop, so they're likely just going... Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Instead of going to Next Island, since no one's buying anything from my shop, I'll just take it, move it to the auction on Calypso, because I really am low on ped. Well, not that low now since I sold the prints, but... Or sold one print. But yeah, I would like to get my balance back up over a thousand so I can start, like, doing some bigger projects again. Doing these little things to gain your balance up again is okay, but it does get a little tedious after a while. Oh yeah, that was the comments from yesterday's video. I should uh, go over them. I posted, is sweating and entropia in general boring or more boring or as fun to play when you're not hammered, like during sober October or any other times you're sober? And then one guy put that sweating is no fun ever if he's sober drunk, hammered, anything. He's like, it's the worst activity you could ever do. And then I responded like, yeah, it can be sweating alone, but I put that like sweating in groups is actually the most fun I've ever had in Tropia. And then I think I almost convinced him to give it a try because he was like posting some comments saying like, oh, that's kind of neat actually. It's like, uh, he was saying too that when he plays the game, he always plays alone. Like, well, if you get sick of playing an MMO alone, you should check out the sweating thing. Helps you meet hundreds of other players in the game every day you do it. And a lot of people are really fun, friendly, and like chatting. And so it's like, man, there's a lot of upsides to collecting sweat. I know, like, I don't disagree with the whole idea that sweating alone can be boring. It's like, yeah, when I sweat alone, I usually watch TV at the same time. So that I can be doing something that's not super boring while sweating. I think that's the trick too. A lot of people that have made sweating fun have managed to find other things to do at the same time and it's like a multitasking thing. So it's like, yeah, sweating on its own isn't actually fun, but when you combine it with other stuff it is. It's like, if you happen to be making out with a hot babe and playing Entropia, it's probably even more fun. <laughs> no, I don't think that would work, but maybe. If anyone wants to try, let me know. <laughs> Girls, I just want to specify our ladies. <laughs> now, gay men can be a little bit aggressive, so I got to make sure I emphasize that. <laughs> Not gay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, 
I, did anyone hear the rules for the new laws in California yesterday? I fucking had to laugh at that one. That was actually the funniest shit I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> no, like, they, like, they're all about, like, leftism is, like, all about progressive equality and, like, they're always preaching that, like, equality for everyone, fucking, what was it? Yeah, inclusion. It's, like, don't discriminate or any all that stuff. So I'm like, all oh, right, like when I was into leftism, I actually used to film their protests and stuff and help them do it, do interviews and shit. I've got a few of them on my channel. If you want to check out the protesting links or activism, I should say. But then that's when I started to realize, like when I was filming a lot of these events, they weren't actually for equal rights for men and women and they weren't for including everyone. They were advocating that all white men are replaced with either women or minorities. I was like, okay, so where does this equality come in, right? Like, if you're replacing an entire people, it's like, that's not really equality and inclusion, is it? You're replacing someone. So it's, that's actually the, the definition of genocide, right? It's like when you replace someone by force. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that's really fucked. And then uh, California just confirmed it even more. Yesterday, they came up with a rule a law actually where companies have to not hire white men that are straight they said you can hire a man if he's gay but you can't if he's straight and you can hire a man if he's any color but white I was like hello is this not racism and sexism like the very definition of it <laughs> so I was thinking maybe it's part of the whole opposite prophecy like we really are switching to a world of complete opposites it's like you'll have people preaching equality for genders and then banning men in the same sentence. It's like, um, that's the opposite. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I just gotta try to embrace the opposites, right? Like, fucking world is all gonna change to opposites and really there's nothing we can do about it. The creator even warned a whole bunch of people. He's like, yeah, just stick to your own business, try to stick to your own clan not get too worried about fucking the whole plan because it's going to happen one way or the other. There's nothing you can do to stop it. So I was like, okay, that's probably the, the road I should take. Stop getting so worked up over everything changing to the opposite. Now I heard a pretty good debate about affirmative action and they were talking about how all these laws were passed in the US to give minorities extra advantages and saying that it was a good thing. And then other people, like even different minorities themselves were actually saying that it's kind of like a, an embarrassment. It's like if someone says that like your race is so enfeebled that they require assistance, it's like isn't that kind of like putting them down? <laughs> It's like if you really wanted it to be equal and stuff, you'd have everyone having the same opportunities because everyone is equal. It's like you don't have to give someone special treatment because they're a baby, right? <laughs> but maybe I could see where that mindset was coming from because the states, like what was it, 100 years ago had some like racist policies. But they've been gone for like, what, half a century, so it's like... I don't know, it's like, I could have swore, like when I was a kid, that racism was completely over. I was kind of surprised to hear that some people are saying that it still existed somewhere. I was like, where? <laughs> now, to be fair, I'm sure there is still like minor pockets of racism. There's bound to be stupid people that don't really know better. So, like, obviously that can happen. But to say, like, everyone is racist, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> Alright, so this guy responded back about being on the show, so I should talk to him quickly. I better not mention too much political stuff, because, man, like... I don't know, I keep saying that people don't want to hear political stuff, but every time I do political episodes, they get the most views and likes. And I was actually watching a few other YouTubers that used to do gaming channels. And they said what happened was, is they started off doing a gaming channel, then eventually they accidentally talked about political stuff on their show because something happened in the news and they couldn't resist talking about it. And then they see their show views just explode and then they're like, holy shit, I'm switching from video games to political content. But really, I don't like political content. Sometimes I like talk about it, but I'm always trying to catch myself and say, hey, stop it. 
It's like I'm fucking sick of it. I gotta stop dwelling on it. Oh yeah, that's right. I crafted some armor yesterday. Yeah, so that was quite a bit of cool loots I had the past few days. Oh yeah, so there's the Danium ingot that I need for the Crafting Mania reward. Alright, maybe I'll take some of this armor and throw it on here. Okay, so what should I do next? Hmm. Sinking. I gotta pick up something. Now I'm getting the feeling that none of these items are gonna sell and that I really should just trade terminal them or I guess maybe put it for sale on the Rocktropia auction. So I don't want to pay the shipping to take it all the way to Calypso. Probably no one's ever gonna buy it. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm fucking sick of keeping all these minerals here and stuff, so I'm picking it all up and I'm selling it all. Sorry guys, I wanted to do crafting, we're saving up to buy it, it's like, I just couldn't hold out any longer. It's like I don't want to have my whole shop just loaded with all these minerals and no one's ever going to buy them, so, gotta try different stuff. Repeat the same mistakes and... Now if anyone's wondering what was so controversial about my Einstein video, it's like I started researching Einstein because I noticed a bunch of red flags started coming up, like his research wasn't holding weight and a lot of the stories of what people are talking about him in the media just wasn't true compared to what actually was written in the, the records. So I started looking more and more into it and I found out that Einstein actually, they have this syndrome called Einstein syndrome where they think that if you're really slow at talking as a baby because Einstein couldn't talk until he was almost five. And they were saying that, oh, that means that if your baby can't talk till they're five, it's probably that they're a genius like Einstein. I was like, uh, that doesn't really make any sense. So I started looking up this like Einstein uh, syndrome and I found out that they only named this thing Einstein syndrome back in the olden days because they didn't have any idea of what autism was. And it turned out that Einstein wasn't like a super genius because of some weird brain stuff. Is because he had autism and like a really severe case of it maybe the most severe case yet so that's what gave him his like super ability to memorize stuff made him very socially awkward and made him like a one-track mind so I was like okay like uh, I just wrote a video or did a video presenting the evidence that Einstein was actually autistic and then I even specified, like, I'm not against autism or anything. I have lots of friends, well, I used to have lots of friends that were autistic at my old job, and they're great people. I got no problems with autism. I guess maybe the social aspects of it, like, people make fun of autistic people because they have a hard time, like, not all of them, but I guess maybe some. Don't want to be stereotyping everyone to one group, but, you know, autism in general, like, the, the symptoms of it, sometimes they have a little bit of difficulty with social interactions, so I was thinking, yeah, like, that explains almost everything with Einstein, right? Now, I think what happened is, is a lot of people, like, glorified Einstein to make him to some hero that they're always trying to em emulate. And then to find out that he was autistic might make them reconsider trying to emulate everything he does. But, like, be embarrassed about it. But I don't think you should be embarrassed. Like, if I had autism, I'd be like, it's who you are. Be proud of it, right? People don't like it, so be it. Now it's hard to get that opinion like to, to try to let go and not worried about people thinking you're an idiot or calling you a moron and shit but to me I've done it for so many years the paranormal stuff that it kind of just rolls right off my shoulders now because I haven't really heard anything different so it's like hearing the same thing over and over again doesn't really shock you right? <laughs> Someone disagrees with me oh no! <laughs> Now, sometimes I do get a little bit, like, pissy when people disagree with me, so I'm not, like, a fucking saint or something. <laughs> I'm sure no one would have thought of that. 
I was like, don't worry, no one's gonna accuse you of being a saint. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I better write a message and apologize to Disclose TV. That was kind of mean, the way I was acting. I don't know, I guess I just had too many assumptions. Usually when you assume, assume stuff, that's what do they say, it makes ass out of you and me. That's how you spell assume. <laughs> ass, you, me. <laughs> I was gonna tell my therapist, but I don't think he would like that. <laughs> the rapist. <laughs> No, I don't have a therapist anymore. I used to when I had my concussion because I actually was going through some really bad depression, but I actually managed to get through it. I was pretty lucky. People want to know how I got through the depression. It wasn't the smart way. <laughs> I just started drinking and fucking became an alcoholic. Started chain smoking cigarettes for like a year and a half after I'd like quit for years. <clears throat> so after like a smoking and drinking my brains out it's like I actually started to feel better <laughs> it's probably not the best plan though because I did a fucking lot of damage to my body it's like after I was the alcoholic for a few months or I guess even a year I fucking rotted a huge hole in my tooth I was like oh fuck no I got this giant bill because of my fucking drinking problem so I had to spend thousands get my teeth fixed and then I was like fuck this I'm not drinking anymore <laughs> Nothing like a $2,000 dentist bill to be like, hey, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, I wonder how that works. I think the Disclosed TV guy said that he had some sort of copyright that only applies in England or some part of Europe. And I was like, well, if someone copyrights something in Europe, but the American or Canadian copyright system says that it's not copyrighted here, how does that work, right? Like, it even says it's public domain. So it's like, if you have an image that says it's public domain, but then someone else is claiming that they've copyrighted it in another country, yeah, so maybe the Disclosed TV was right. They fucking copyrighted another country, and when I looked it up and it said public domain in North America, that it actually wasn't. Maybe. <laughs> no, I actually went to business school and learned all the rules for that copyright system. And when I logged on to like Google and I Googled it to confirm what my business school said, it actually said the opposite. And I was like, well, what the hell is true now? Did the business school teach me false information? Or maybe the laws changed? I don't know. Because in our business school, they were talking about the copyright law and saying that 30% was actually enough to change something that you don't need to copyright it. And they even gave like millions of examples for weeks about how many different companies took an existing thing, changed it by 30%, and had great success. So I was like, okay, so that's the rule. And then when I looked it up on Google, there are like some law office is saying, no, that's not the rule. So I'm like, well, why are business schools teaching that then? It's like it was a government business school too. So if like I'm going to a government sponsored business school, why would they be teaching you rules that are false? It's like, I don't get it. Oh, well, I'll just move on from the disclosed TV thing. It was a dream that dad quick. <laughs> Finishing quick is my specialty. Links below. <laughs> right, so I got some of those kegs. That was pretty fun. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're over the break time. So I better give that a quick shout. Today's Entropian Adventures and anti-disclosed TV content is brought to you by Crack. Crack. It'll fuck you up. Woo! Oh god, you know what feels nice today? Not having overeaten yesterday. It's like I've been feeling swollen for like the past two weeks. Or I'm like, oh god, my body feels swollen. I've been eating way too much. Oh, today is like such a relief. Not feeling swollen. All 
Alright, so what other items and cool stuff can I do on Rocktropia? Let's check out Club Never Die and see if I could finish a little bit more hunting. Holy fuck, my room is a sauna today. Yeah, I'm starting to realize that, man, like, being a YouTuber, one of the most, or podcaster, or content creator in general, one of the most stressful things when it comes to doing it is sharing it. It's like, I don't know why. Well, I guess because there's so much spam and stuff, but man, there's ever a lot of rules to stop people from sharing. It's like, I don't know how many people will like start a Facebook page about a video game. Be like, hey, post your content here about the video game. But then if you create some content, like a podcast or something, and post it there, they're like, oh, sorry, you can't self-promote. Like, well, if I can't promote my material, how is anyone supposed to find it to promote it for me? Doesn't seem to really make much sense, does it? So then you end up leaving and going to another group. Other groups will do the same thing, allow you to keep sharing it. And then at one point, they just all of a sudden be like, hey, can't share your stuff anymore. It's like, okay, I guess, moving on. <laughs> Yeah, that happened to me with Reddit and Entropia. They really started hating the content I was creating. I was like, well, if you hate it so much, why don't you just not watch it, right? Like, why would you require banning me from sharing my content? So, well, moved on from Reddit, moved on from Disclosed TV. I have a feeling that's actually what's happening with YouTube. They're going to continue banning so much stuff that people are going to be like, okay, got to move to a new platform. Remember, what was it, MySpace? They used to think the same thing. They're like, oh, we're too big to fail. We're too big to fail. Where's MySpace now? Huh? Where is it? <laughs> People haven't even heard of it in most cases. All right, can I shoot him? Or will I? Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, man, this is going to be a meltdown if I come here to hunt, so I better get the hell out of here. <laughs> Oh well, it was kind of fun. I got to target one mob. So exciting. <laughs> now I was thinking maybe it would be cool if there were some more AI locations. Like there's Camp Kronk, there's Club Never Die. If anyone knows a third location where I can find AI, if you could please put it in the chat, I'd really appreciate it. And maybe when I find out that one, I won't do an episode about it right away. <laughs> So I can at least finish the AI mission a few times. <laughs> now let's go hang out in Club Never Die. See what's going on in here. Does anyone like to come to this club? I was thinking this would have been a kind of neat location for the auction, right? You could have someone up here. If Bonnie was doing her auction, she could like stand up here on the stage and do the auction talking and then people that are bidding on the auction could like sit around on these chairs or I guess none of these chairs actually even work oh so maybe that's why no one's hanging out in Club Never Die you can't even sit on the furniture although this guy can so I don't know if Never Die is watching and you want to get this place going maybe we could soup it up by like adding some seats so we can actually sit in the club Maybe the whole reason these seats don't work is he wanted people to be like up and dancing. But you can see that there's nobody here. Alright, so maybe I'll make that the thumbnail for today. I'll say Club Never Die something. We'll make it, should Club Never Die upgrade the seats or something. I'll post it on Disclosed TV. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I think it was probably just because I got my hopes up so much, right? You ever get your hopes up over something and then it seems worse than it actually was just because you had your hopes up so high? Oh, boy.
Now I was thinking maybe I could do some exploring. I haven't done any exploring for a while. Let's start from here and work our way north. We only got about 15 minutes, but I think I could make it. Maybe I can find a teleporter up in the north. Here, hold on. I'm going to look up Rock Tro Yeah, I was just going to say I'm going to look up Rocktropia's teleporter map, but I can guarantee you when I open that map, it's going to be nothing like the actual map. It'll be another case of... Oh, fuck, man. There's creatures everywhere around here. How am I going to get north? Oh, I can. Actually, I'll put on the axe so I can run a bit faster. Oh, I know what it is, too. It's like, you know the old saying, truth hurts? So I was thinking maybe that's what happened when I talked about Einstein. Some people actually thought it was true, and it was like hurting them. It's like it could be true, I don't know, I'm just presenting theories, but... Try not to get too upset about it, like... The theory doesn't match what you wanted it to, like... Maybe just give it a rest, right? Like you don't have to freak out that everything doesn't match your theories. I should make this map smaller. Yeah, I sure hope that Rick Moranis is okay today. So I don't know if anyone heard about what happened to him in New York yesterday, but he got attacked. They're not labeling it a hate crime yet, but it sure seems suspicious. <laughs> Just randomly attacking someone for no reason. I guess that's what it could be. Don't want to jump to conclusions. <laughs> I know I was jumping to conclusions a bit when I first saw it because everyone's like, oh, it was Black Lives Matter attacking him, but I don't think they officially endorsed it. It's just people putting that in comments. Now, if anyone doesn't know who Rick Moranis was, like, he was a huge icon for Canadians. Like, he is a Canadian, and he was, like, our best comedian for, like, decades. I think he was, yeah, he was on Saturday Night Live for a while, and he did a great skit on that called uh, Strange Bro oh no that's what it was they had like this drinking show shut up <laughs> that's probably Disclosed TV messaging me back saying you're kicked off the forum <laughs> it's like you dare to dis discuss this <laughs> we want it censored <laughs> no but anyways he did a movie too about his skit from Saturday Night Live it's called Strange Brew and it was like a, a Canadian icon movie. Like, everyone loved that movie who was Canadian. If you're Canadian, you had to watch it like two, three times a week. <laughs> it was in the law, I swear. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, so he was like a really fucking cool guy. Everyone's like, man, he's the nicest Canadian, coolest guy. And then for him to get attacked like that in New York, that'd be basically like if the Dalai Lama got attacked somewhere. And then fucking Tibet was like, holy fuck, you're attacking the Dalai Lama? That's basically what happened to Canada yesterday. Well, I guess it's not all Canadians because there's probably a whole ton of younger Canadians who've never even heard of Rick Moranis, but I'm probably not even saying his name right. <laughs> no, but I missed that Strange Brew movie. And you want to know a cool fact about the Strange Brew movie? Because they filmed a part of it in my hometown. <laughs> I was like, yeah! <laughs> Every time that scene comes up in the movie, I'm like, I know that place! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this ice I thought would be loaded with minerals or something, but no luck yet. Now, that's what I was thinking. Tensions overall in the world are kind of overflowing, so I gotta try not to be jumping to conclusions all the time. Who knows, maybe the guy that punched him didn't even know it was Rick Moranis, and probably not because it was like a random attack. Maybe he was just going to punch anyone. It didn't really matter who it was or what their skin color was. Could be that. <laughs> just having a bad day and just taking it out of the people. Not that it's right or anything, but it's definitely not a hate crime right off the bat because we really don't know. We'll see when they catch the guy and find out what his motive was. 
Like, yeah, maybe like his kid died or something. And he's like freaking out about it. Like you never know, right? Oh yeah, and the other thing I was worried about Rick Moranis is like, I don't know if, yeah, I guess I could share it. I'll try not to get too upset. All right, got some of the images ready. Before I show everyone that, let's get on for a little spin of the Bitcoin casino. This always helps cheer me up, especially today. We're at 29,891. That's damn close to the 30,000 Satoshi goal. So let's give it a spin. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm like 90 away from the 30,000 Satoshi goal. So that's sweet. Right when I got the bad news about Disclose TV, I got some good news from free Bitcoin. So sweet. That's good. All right. So the other thing I was going to do is I was going to share you guys just a couple pictures about what happened to me with my concussion, why I'm a little bit worried about Rick Moranis. Well, actually really worried. It's like when I had my concussion at work, um, it was really bad. I've like felt my like skull crack in like three or four places and I was like, holy fuck, I'm gonna die, right? And then it actually was with my brother's company. So I was really worried that he was gonna lose his like life savings due to me in this work accident. So I tried to cover it up for like as much as I could saying, oh, I'm not really that hurt. I'm not really that hurt, right? But, <laughs> see that was the problem, when I went to the hospital and I was telling them, oh, don't worry, I'm not really that hurt, they didn't do any tests on me. So here I had a fucking cracked skull in like three places, and like fucking, like the cut along my forehead started from where my hat ended, and went all the way until it hit my safety glasses. And the safety glasses are what actually stopped the fucking metal bar from crushing my skull any worse. Thank God. <laughs> would have crushed my eye completely if I wasn't wearing safety glasses. So yeah, it's like I didn't call an ambulance and I just went to the hospital and was trying to tell them that, yeah, look, it's not that bad. Just stitch me up. I'm good to go. <clears throat> I even tried to go back to work after. It was like, I was like, oh, the accident wasn't that bad. Got the stitches. I can go back, right? The swelling's not that bad. Doesn't feel much pain. It's like, I didn't realize I was actually in shock. It's like normally when you like crack your skull, it's like you stop feeling pain. It's got, I don't know what it is, like some sort of instinctive reaction or your body's chemicals. But it was weird because like when I had the accident, <clears throat> that day I had been working really hard. So my whole body just ached, like my back ached, my arms ached, my legs ached, just severe pain for my whole body. And then as soon as I got my skull cracked, I knew it was bad because I couldn't feel any pain. I was like, I didn't have back pain, didn't have leg pain anymore. I was like, what the fuck, right? Like, that's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I was worried about Rick Moranis. So I was like, man, he could be experiencing the same thing where he got a really bad concussion and then all of a sudden he doesn't feel pain anymore. And it's not because you're not feeling pain because you're not injured. It's because you've reached the maximum what your body can handle for pain. It just turns it off. <laughs> So it's like, I don't know, like, if I was Rick Moranis and after that attack, I would have called an ambulance and I would have went straight to the hospital and then straight home. None of this walking to the hospital himself and then walking to the police station to report it. It's like, that was like what I was doing. I was like, oh, I'm not hurt that bad. I'll just go around and do stuff. But thank God for me, what I did is instead of going back to work, even my boss is like, oh, we better play it safe and take a couple days off. So I was like, okay, guess I'm not really hurt that bad. I'll go home and take a few days off. I was thinking all oh, these skull cracks will probably just heal. It's like a bone, it heals, right? Couldn't be that bad. So fuck, yeah, I guess I'll show the image. I wake up the next day and guess what happened? <laughs> fucking my head swelled up so bad that I was blind. I fucking woke up, couldn't see. I was like, oh fuck, right? <laughs> It was like my eyes, they went so blurry from the swelling that all I could make out was like little blurry specks here and there. I was like, oh fuck, like I'm like really injured. <laughs> yeah, and then the other funny thing too. Not if it's funny because it's actually funny. <sighs> Just so I can talk about it. <clears throat> now let's see, where did I put that folder? Just one sec. 
Yeah, I guess the funny part about this too, yeah, sorry for breaking out. It's actually, I got really bad post-traumatic stress from the accident. So it still bothers me. <laughs> now I'm just hoping Rick Moranis doesn't have to go through this because man, it was fucking hell. But anyways, so I'll show you guys the picture. Sorry, it might be a little bit graphic. Yeah, so this picture here isn't the same day of the accident. This is like a few days after I'd started taking ibuprofen because I didn't really get many good pictures of the actual massive swelling because I couldn't see to even take pictures. And I wasn't gonna ask my family to take pictures of me while I'm fucking so swollen. But anyway, so this is the first picture of what I look like maybe like a week after the swelling started to go down. Yeah, and it's funny because like I shared this picture with my family <laughs> and when I did my grandma asked she's like who is this and I'm like this is me and she's like you <laughs> no so yeah that's what it was like for the first bit even my grandma couldn't recognize me I was like holy fuck that wasn't good right so then after it healed a bit this is like I don't know two or three weeks later started to have like really bad bruising all over my face but at least the the golf ball welt went down um, I got these really weird skull clicking noises like anytime I would touch my skull I could feel where it broke and where it was clicking I was like oh fuck man this ain't good and can you believe it's like when I actually like had all these problems I'm like okay I gotta come forward to the doctors tell them it was actually worse than I first let on <laughs> and guess what happened they're like oh really was it worse so uh, the government insurance agency here here's where a little bit of the swelling went down there was like a few more weeks later where the swelling and bruising was almost completely gone. And then there was the big scar that I had on my forehead for quite a while. And that scar actually lasted for months and months and I could never get rid of it. And then I found out an ancient secret that I used to get rid of scars and it fucking worked. So I was like, thank God, at least I got rid of the scar. Yeah, and all the clicking noises in my forehead, after about two years, they started to go away. So I was like, thank God, at least I think the, the cracks in my skull finally healed. It was weird because like anytime I would like touch my skull I could like feel it click and pop and it's like you're not supposed to get clicking and popping noises for your skull right so anyways I went to the doctor I'm like okay doc I'm coming clean I got hurt way worse than I let on because it's my brother's company he's like okay well the the government insurance agency is wanting to send you to their specialized doctors to check this out I'll write it off you go check them out they'll find out everything do tests and stuff so I'm like all right government insurance agency it's gonna fucking help me, right? Right? <laughs> so guess what happened? I went to the government insurance agency. <laughs> I got to the office, and the office is just loaded with fucking hot babes. Like, in their, like, 20s, 30s, just smoking hot babes. And they're the owners of this facility. So I'm like, oh, this is cool, but it seems a little bit weird. Why are all these, like, really young, rich women in charge of this government facility? Shouldn't it be like old men or something, but I was like, whatever, right? Like, I guess it's a new building and just kids are running it. <laughs> so then I fucking, uh, well, kids compared to my age, right? Like, So yeah, I get into their specialized neurology department. I'm like, so you guys going to run some x-rays, find out how many places my skull's cracked and see if we can find some like rehab to fucking correct some of this shit. He's like, uh, no, no. He's like, government insurance agency, we don't do any tests like x-rays or anything so I'm like okay so what exactly am I here for he's like well I do got one test I can run for you I'm like okay let's do that test he's like here try walking in a straight line so I take two steps in a straight line you know what he says you're a hundred percent healed nothing's ever been wrong with you I'm like buddy I fucking got my skull cracked open and I'm fucking practically dying here and your test is take two steps forward you're perfectly good to go back to work and I'm like uh, I've heard in government insurance agencies were bad but I like had no idea that it was gonna be this bad <laughs> it's like then I, I looked into it to try to find out why this government insurance agency is so fucked up right like why are they taking patients and they're almost dead not doing any tests and just sending them back to work I was like, what the fuck is going on? And this is like this, I'll, I'll even tell you the name of the place. It's the Altum Healthcare in Cambridge. It's like, I guess I should be like disclose or not disclosing who they are, but I feel like I'm obligated to tell people what they got going on there. It's a fucking scam. 
Like there was a couple of nice employees there, but man, most of it was just really rich people taking advantage of government money and fucking over the general public. And I'm fucking, I was so pissed after that appointment. Like I almost punched the wall. That's how pissed I was. Like you're, you telling me you're, you're, you got someone who's almost dying and you're going to tell them walk in a straight line and you're good to go. We don't need to do x-rays, nothing. All right, so I'm fucking got some rocks, yeah. Yeah, so that's basically the, the history of my injury and stuff. I won't get more into it. It's basically, if anyone's ever like working at a workplace and you're thinking it's a little bit of a dangerous job and you could get injured, never, never depend on the government agencies to help you with money, treatments, anything. They will fuck you worse than you ever thought possible. It's like I should have realized it when I first started to talk to other people who had gone through what I did. First thing they told me, I said, make sure you bring a camcorder everywhere you go so that when government agents start lying to you, you can record it. So they'll be less likely to fucking tell you off and lie to your face when they know they're being recorded. And I'm like, oh, it can't be that bad. So I never did bring the camcorder. But I was like, fuck, man, I really should have brought the camcorder. They fucked me so bad at those government offices. It was sickening. And then, yeah, like, that's when I found out more of the corruption with unions. I was like, oh, so this whole system is unionized. So it's like the unions collecting billions of dollars from the government and completely fucking over the public that's paying their salaries. So I'm like, that is this whole injury thing, that changed my mind on unions for the rest of my life. Like, they tried to fucking kill me. So it's like when someone tries to kill you, that's when you change your opinion about liking them, right? <laughs> I don't know, like, technically, I don't know if they want to, like, charge me for a slander or whatever, saying they tr almost tried to kill me, but I actually talked to the hospitals, like, some of the other ones that fucked me over with tests, and I actually got them to give me written apologies how they mistreated me. So, it's like, I even caught them red-handed in some of it and got them to apologize. So, if the government wants to take me to court and sue me for slander, I'll be bringing that note with me. I got all the fucking evidence I need to fucking back my shit up. Those sons of bitches. Okay, I try not to fucking get too upset about that. Now, I was lucky, like, what is it? I think it's like two and a half years now since the accident, and it's almost reached the point where some days I forget that I had the accident. I was like, that's good, because for a while, like two and a half years, it was torture every day. And a lot of people are like, oh, you should sue, you should sue. Like, who am I gonna sue? My brother? Close the fucking family business? It's like, uh, that's not exactly the most greatest idea for a lawsuit, right? So that's another thing I just got advice for people. Like, if you're ever considering jobs, always, always try never to work with family. Because if you end up working with the family business and something happens, you can't sue them, right? All right, some more rocks. This is the Calden Heaven 61. Yeah, so sorry to freak everyone out today if the, those images were pretty disgusting. And my brother actually tried to get me to take pictures and my skull was still split open. You could see right in. I was like, oh fuck man, I almost puked from looking at that. You think I want to take a picture? <laughs> that was the thing too, like after the government insurance agencies, like they, you should have took a picture of how bad the accident was. I'm like, well, I was having post-traumatic stress. It's like I actually didn't want to torture myself any worse than it already was because it was on the borderline of death. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'll try not to be too negative. I appreciate everyone's support and stuff over the show. You can see I do got a little bit of issues, but it's like who doesn't have issues in life? I don't fucking try to be like some victimhood making everyone feel sorry for me. No, it's like, don't feel sorry for me. It's like, despite all these accidents and stuff, I managed to recover pretty well. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to find a teleporter. Maybe I'll just hit teleport now, see where it takes me. I did find quite a bit of rocks. I'll throw it in storage. And then I guess, what is it? Tomorrow's episode, we'll be heading out to... Or no, tomorrow's episode, I'll put all that stuff on auction. So people can see what prices I put. I'm not going to put any reserve on it. Because I really want the shit to just sell. I'm sick of looking at it. So if you want some bonding liquid and stuff for some sick crafting missions on Rocktropia, 
you could be in store for some good deals. Yeah, and then after I put that stuff on auction, maybe I'll fly back to Next Island or Calypso. I'll probably decide at that point. And if I go to Calypso, I'll place my blueprints from Rocktropia all on auction and then just put new, cheaper stuff in Rocktropia because no one wants to buy the expensive shit. And then, uh, yeah, and if that doesn't go, then maybe I'll just go to Next Island and finish my crafting run, see if I can get some... Yeah, that's a better idea. Let's do that. I'll go to Next Island, finish the crafting run, get the cracker prints and whatever other prints I loot. Not to jinx it, I hope I actually loot some. Hey, here's Big Daddy. <laughs> no, I like him because we have the shops together at Camp Crunk. I haven't seen him in a while, so I was wondering what he's up to. Alright, where is the teleporter here? Oh yeah, it's the helicopters. If anyone gets stuck and they can't find the teleporter when you're in the Arctic area, don't forget, it's the fucking pilot of the helicopter. It's like, I guess I did have this teleporter the whole time. And when I was just looking for it, I'd never seen the dot. Oh well. It was fun, at least I picked up some rocks along the way. I don't see any storage here. Oh yeah, it's good that I don't put in storage on Arctic anyways. Alright, thanks again for watching the show everyone. Sorry I was a little bit cranky about the whole disclosed TV thing. I'll try to cheer up today. Maybe get some more positive stuff going on, like get the scale open, and take the plunge and start recording it. <laughs> figure it's a good time. Sober October is perfect. I have the lowest appetite I've had in months. So it's really the best time. Okay, let's just summarize the show quick. I want to see what minerals I got. I didn't really total it as I was going, so let's see what we got. Ooh, 111 Calden. I guess all three piles that I found were the same thing and it just stacked it. And if anyone's looking to buy some Calden, looks like I'm going to start having some supplies of Burkite, Calden, for sale at my shop soon. Holy, like I didn't walk into a PvP area, or did I? I was carrying all the minerals, I forgot. Alright, so that's everything in storage. I'll have to get it out of storage again tomorrow, so I'll just put it at the top. I don't know, for some reason I feel safer putting stuff in storage. Anyone else ever get that? <laughs> Alright, speaking of feeling safe, let's wrap up the show. Alright, if you want to help out my show, don't forget we always got Patreon, Society6, Swagbucks, Game Kit, Hideout, and Bitcoin TV. And yeah, if you want the more info link below, that'll open up the links to all this stuff. And then virtual made sex machine for adults and men only. If ladies need a sex machine, they know who to call. I'm just kidding, unless you're near Toronto. But, <laughs> yeah, what was I going to say? Let's see, if you happen to get any Calden in your vaporizer and it tastes like shit, then give the show a dislike. But, if you're enjoying Sober October and you're nice and sober or you just like the show and you want to help with the like, just give me a like and I really appreciate it. I hope you guys big time. All right, take care, everyone. Make sure you never buy the products from my sponsor because it will ruin your life. Bye for now. Yeah, and sorry to disclose TV. If anyone's watching it, I shouldn't have bitched about you guys so much. I'm just a little cranky in the mornings. See ya. Here's two video links and a subscribe button. Three at the same time.